If you enjoy what you hear here today, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page. Every dollar helps, and you get to see content that you won't see here. Chapter 35 Into the Ever Free Part 1 The Everfree Forest loomed in front of her threateningly. The leaves adorning the twisted and crooked branches on the trees waved and rustled, like a hungry predator, anxiously awaiting its next meal to walk within range. A soft breeze rolled over everything, including Twilight herself, sending a frighteningly cold shiver down her spine. It may have been the cold, or it could have been her own anxiety. She couldn't tell, really. Fluttershy stood off to her left, pensively prodding at the ground and nervously toying with her mane with her hooves, her eyes darting around at every little noise. In the distance, an owl hooted, drawing a twitch from her. Applejack was right next to Fluttershy and took a moment to pat her back encouragingly. Pinky was there, too, looking at the group with a big smile and wide, happy eyes. Twilight had no idea how she was able to stay so perky, despite everything that was happening. But she decided not to question it, mainly because she didn't want that cheery optimism to go away. It was pretty much all that was keeping them all focused and alert at this point. There was still one pony missing, though. Dag Nabbit, where is Rarity? Applejack groaned restlessly, shifting on her haunches and glaring off down the path towards Ponyville. She's costing us a lot of time. If she takes too long, we'll just have to go on without her, Twilight said with a surprising amount of composure. If one had a hoof on her, though, they'd be able to feel her shakes, without any doubt. We can't afford to waste any more time. I had that! Came the somewhat fatigued voice of the mare in question. Rarity came cantering up the hill with fanciful saddlebags slung across her back. <sighs> Uh, don't leave without me! Twilight glared at her. What took you so long? She asked, more sharply than she intended, though her current frustration prevented her from apologizing. Oh, I'm terribly sorry for the delay. Whew. Rarity panted when she came to a stop, the rest of the group gathering around her. I just wanted to make sure we had something specific for this mission of ours. Here. Yeah. Her horn lit up and removed the saddlebags from her back. The pouches were opened and, with a bit of an unnecessary but pleasing flourish, five cloaks and scarves were procured and presented to each member of the group. Oh, um, what are these for? Fluttershy asked curiously, then instantly wilted. Oh, um, no offense meant. They're lovely. Thank you for the, um, cloaks. Rarity smiled softly at the timid one before clearing her throat. Ahem. <coughs> we are going into unfamiliar territory with minimal resources and an evil, angry alicorn awaiting us, I fear. Away from the comforts of Ponyville, we will be cold and without protection from nature. I brought us these to help us keep warm and shelter us in case of a wild rain cloud passing over us or something. And plus, if we need to stop and rest for whatever reason, they can serve as blankets. Twilight smiled while putting on hers. It was a simple enough piece of attire. Colored a dark blue, but it covered most of her body, and already she could feel her temperature increasing. She nodded at Rarity. How thoughtful, Rarity. Thank you. Think nothing of it. A simple act of generosity can and will go a long way, I found. Rarity rebuffed before looking at the Everfree. Her confident smile faltered somewhat. Mm, I like him. Simple, not obstructive, warm, nice, Applejack added with an approving expression. Before long, every pony had their cloaks on and were ready to go. Twilight looked into the forest and grimaced apprehensively. All right, we aren't going to get anything done just standing here. Let's go, every pony. So... None of you have been in here before, huh? Twilight said fearfully, her eyes looking towards the branches on the trees that swayed and bent in the breeze. The way they curled and moved reminded her of claws, reaching out to snatch her and the others away. Oh, heavens no! 
I mean, just look at it. It's dreadful. Rarity replied, her voice shifting from almost offended to quietly terrified as she went. Applejack cast a weary glance over her shoulder. Oof, and it sure as heck ain't the same as the rest of Equestria. What's that even supposed to mean? Twilight asked, not entirely sure if she actually wanted to know. I don't know, if we're honest. Applejack shrugged slightly. I just know that the plants grow without any pony to help them. Same with the animals and weather. It's all on its own, I guess. A metaphorical light bulb clicked on in Twilight's head. Oh, I see, she said, some of the fear in her voice leaving to be replaced by a more scholarly and level tone. It's a primal zone. Say what now? A primal zone, Twilight went on, smiling at the opportunity to distract her mind and share knowledge. Is a region or area in the world that hasn't been tamed by ponies or other cultures. It attacks and behaves exactly the way it did before Equestria was founded, wild, untamed, and largely self-sufficient. Ponies tamed most of Equestria's land to obey our methods and actions. So most of the weather across Equestria, for example, was artificially made up in Cloudsdale a long time ago. The moisture that makes up the clouds and the rain that falls from it had special properties woven into it that made it moldable to pony designs. I mean, Pegasus I can interact with clouds no matter where they come from, but they will have an immensely harder time controlling a wild cloud than an artificial one. Say what again? Applejack said, her muzzle scrunching up in confusion. No offense, Sugar Cube, but I ain't super familiar with the uh, history and magic and stuff. Twilight shrugged. Fair enough. Suddenly, the ground beneath them lurched. Every pony immediately went still, save for Fluttershy, who hopped into the air and hovered there on reflex with her wings. For a moment, all was silent. Then, a crack appeared in the dirt not far ahead, where a sharp drop-off was visible. <gasps> Get back! Twilight began to cry out in alarm before the ground beneath her, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, and Applejack gave away and fell taking them with it. Frightened cries and exclamations of surprise were all that any pony could hear over the sound of falling, rolling, and crumbling stones. Twilight looked around frantically, looking for anything she could use to stop her descent. Small stones and chunks of loose dirt battered her body from all sides for several long moments. Finally, she was able to get her bearings enough to see that she was sliding down at a steep angle towards a ledge that, if she fell, would almost certainly be the end of her. Acting fast, she was barely able to grapple the ledge when she came to it and clung to it for dear life. From where she was, she could see Fluttershy holding Rarity's tail firmly in her teeth, guiding her down a section of the ledge that would let her down to the ground below without risk of hurting herself. Alpajack was holding onto a loose root with her teeth, looking down at Twilight uncertainly. Then Applejack let go of the root and slid down the hill once more bracing her hooves as she went. Hang on, Twilight, I'm coming! Applejack's hooves grasped Twilight and held her there, keeping her from falling. However, there wasn't enough leverage to help her back up, and already the tension was building. They wouldn't be able to hold Twilight up like this for long. <laughs> Applejack, what do I do? Twilight shrieked in a panic, her eyes squeezed shut to block out anything that might distract her from holding on. <laughs> I don't know, Applejack admitted through clenched teeth, her eyebrows twitching from the strain. <laughs> Fluttershy, Rarity, get down below and see if you can get into a position to catch Twilight. She called out in a strained voice. On it, Rarity called back, still approaching the slope. <laughs> I don't know if Rarity's magic can hold my weight, Applejack. Twilight started, before gasping in shock when a piece of the ledge broke away under her forelegs almost jarring her loose. <laughs> and Fluttershy isn't strong enough to catch me either. <laughs> well, do you have a better plan? Applejack grunted, her grip starting to loosen slightly. Cause if you do, now would be a mighty fine time to share. I don't, Twilight said, her voice cracking. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you, Applejack said before taking a deep breath and looking Twilight in the eye. 
We're short on options. But even if they can't catch you, we'll all do our darndest to make sure you're alright, you hear me? You'll be fine, and that's an honest promise. Twilight closed her eyes and nodded. The ledge then jerked down slightly, and one of her forelegs came loose. Applejack tried to reach out for it, but the momentum caused by Twilight being dislodged caused her other forehoof to come free. She screamed, long and loud as she fell. Her voice fell silent when, in her eyes, the world doubled. She saw a similar scene panning out alongside the one she was in now, falling down to the Everfree along a cliffside, about to hit the ground below. In one of the two scenes she was seeing, she was caught before she hit the ground by Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. Then reality reasserted itself, and to Twilight's despair, Rainbow Dash was not there, and she was still free-falling. She was upside down now, and could see the ground coming up to meet her face at dangerously high velocities. She screamed in terror, and covered her eyes with her forelegs. Twilight gradually began to wake up with a severe ache burning on the side of her barrel. She winced and gasped sharply before her eyes snapped open. She was at the bottom of the cliff with her cloak draped over her like a blanket. Not far away, she gets the Applejack, Rarity, and Fluttershy sitting around a small campfire, which Twilight's muscles gradually relaxed from the warmth. Applejack looked over, and her eyes widened. She's awake! She said simply, standing up and galloping over before sitting down before Twilight. Phew. You had us all worried sick there, Twi. She muttered in relief. Ow. Twilight groaned before sitting upright, wincing as she did so. Ow. <laughs> what happened? Um, you were about to hit the ground, but, um... Fluttershy began before poking at the ground seemingly unsure of herself. It was then the Twilight realized that someone was missing. Where's Pinkie Pie? Uh... Applejack drawled out while rubbing the back of her head. They, uh... See, the thing about Pinkie Pie is, uh... uh... Every pony went silent for a second all of them looking like they were trying to figure out what to say. Where is she? Twilight repeated, not in the mood for beating around the bush. I'm right here, silly filly! Pinky chirped from behind Twilight, causing her to yelp, gasp in discomfort, and whirl around. There Pinky was, and behind her, Twilight could see what looked like a pile of... popped balloons? You're heavier than you look, you know that? Pinky said teasingly before pronking by, singing a little la la to herself. What? What? Hey! Twilight snapped after Pinky when she realized that she had basically just been called fat. The thing about Pinkie Pie is that she saved your life and we have no idea how she did it. Rarity finally clarified after clearing her throat. We all lost track of her during the rock slide, so I guess she had some time to gather supplies to catch you with? Balloons? Twilight huffed in disbelief. Yeah, don't know where she got them, but she brought like 30 of the darn things and set up a nice big cushion for you to land on. Abadak continued with a relieved smile on her face. You popped all of them on the way down, but they slowed your fall enough that... You only got a big bruise on your side. Fluttershy added with a slightly amused smile. Right. Twilight muttered, still not quite sure if she believed what she was hearing. But it's like I said. Applejack said more softly, settling down next to Twilight and resting a hoof on her shoulder. We're looking out for each other. Don't you ever doubt that, not even for a moment, Sugar Cube. As long as we keep on doing that and stick together, I reckon we'll all be fine. Twilight smiled warmly and felt herself relax just a little bit more. Now if you're able to move, we should probably get back to it. 
You were out for almost an hour. Apple Jack said reassuringly before nudging Twilight encouragingly and standing tall. Twilight felt a warm smile spread across her face before nodding and standing up. All right. Let's go. 